Coming up, medicine and prayers help a critical patient beat COVID and the incredible story of surviving an avalanche. Well, welcome to 700 Club Canada. Do you know that God is on the move in Canada? There's an awakening in the body of Christ to rise up in these difficult times when churches are facing challenges in this pandemic. But we can be assured that God has a plan even when we cannot clearly see what it is. We can live each day on mission and living on purpose with Him. And today, you'll see that even the most difficult situations can actually be an opportunity for something incredible. You'll see how a near-death experience caused by COVID-19 became a turning point for Scott and his family. Scott will share how prayer not only healed him, but it changed his life forever. And you'll witness a miraculous rescue after an avalanche buried a young snowboarder on the side of a mountain. But first, I am pleased to be joined by Bill Fladeris. He is the senior editor of Faith Today, a Canadian Christian magazine that has been equipping readers with expert research and insight into Canadian culture, Christian life, and ministry since 1983. Welcome, Bill. So glad you joined us. Thank you, Lori. I'm really glad to be here. Well, how did you get writing uh, for a Christian publication, Bill? Uh, well, I wish I could say that uh, I, I, I prayed about it a lot and that, you know, I, I just saw the wisdom of it, but really I kind of stumbled into it. Uh, when I was in university, I went to Redeemer University in Hamilton, Ontario. Sure. Uh, I, 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 I started helping out on the student newspaper and I, I realized that my love for words and and writing was actually something that I could, you know, do something with that other people might find useful. So um, I was looking around for a summer job and my mom sent me an ad that there was a local paper, community paper hiring for a summer. And so, right. so just some something simple like that uh, opened up one door and led to another door and to another door. Uh, yeah. I got a part-time job at a Christian newspaper. Uh, and then from there, uh, did various things until I ended up at Faith Today. Wow. So, uh, Well, yay for moms. You know, sometimes we set up our kids in the right direction, right? <laughs> well, yeah, you're... yeah I, I, I say that, yeah, she's the one who got me my, who got me right, at, started on the path. That's so good. Well, now you're one of the senior editors of Faith Today. Can you tell us about the magazine and its mission? I've been reading it for years, by the way. Well, thanks. Yeah, um, it's been around for a long time. Sometimes I feel like it's one of Canada's best kept secrets. Um, not everybody knows about it, but right. it's it's a it's a it's a magazine that tries to connect the church uh, across all its diverse parts. So there's more more than forty denominations that are um, part of our reading uh, audience, and so part of what Faith Today tries to do is uh, share stories from you know, one sector of the church so that other sectors of the church can hear about it and learn from it. So it's a big, it's a big connecting uh, uh, point for the broader evangelical church. Well, I think it's, that's what's so beautiful about it. There is a diversity of voices, a diversity of, you know, denominations, and there is great unity, though, in the body of Christ. And I just find it so rich because there's so many different perspectives. One of the most recent issues was titled, Church Still Matters, Here's How. Can you tell us why you chose to tackle that topic? Yeah, it's a great, it's a tough topic because right now in the Canadian church, if you think about the broader context, things are kind of tough. Yeah. Um, we published a, a major study in uh, January, 2020, that showed that uh, more than half of Canadians are either atheist, agnostic, or unreligious. Right. Only only ten percent of Canadians are attending church on a weekly basis. So wow. there's that context, yep. and then there's the pandemic, right? So um, people are still worshiping online with their communities, but uh, the reality is, uh, and observers have noted, s some people are drifting away. Uh, we're not sure that they're going to come back after the pandemic is over. Right. Um, and there's a lot of pastors who are burnt out, uh, exhausted. And, you know, thinking about retiring or quitting after the pandemic because it's been such a challenge on them. Yeah. So in a, in a context like that, um, we need to be encouraged and remind ourselves of the importance of 
of church and that it is this life-giving thing that we that we need to be a part of that we've been created to be a part of right and i always say church is god's idea it's not a man-made idea right yeah exactly exactly and so you know we church is not perfect and the author who wrote the piece for us does a great job at being really frank about it's kind of like going to a potluck right and some of the food is really good and some of it's maybe not as good but we need to be part of that um that's you know that's that's how we can live the abundant life that god's calling us to absolutely i I, i'm so with you on that and i appreciate the magazine reminding us the beauty of church and you know you and i show up to church so it's not perfect right away right and that's the thing exactly (laughs) (laughs) you know why is it so important for canadian christians to join the conversation around some of the more challenging topics that you cover in this magazine yeah, that's a good question too. Uh, it's it's tough um, because there's a lot of diversity a- across the church. So uh, any issue that you want to take, like some examples, we've recently done issues on uh, fallen leaders, on euthanasia, on um, racism. Uh, Christians are going to have a lot of different opinions on these different topics. And so what we need to have conversations so that we don't just drift apart from each other and become more and more polarized all the time, right? right, right we don't yes. want one part of the Christian church saying, I'm a hand, I don't need the foot, or I'm a foot, I don't need a hand, right? Yeah. We need the church. The church is, is the body of Christ, and we need each other, and we need to call each other back to being faithful, right? So um, when we keep having that conversation going on, and that's one of the things that Faith Today facilitates or helps to make a place for, we call each other back to to true belief and we don't allow ourselves or our brother or sister to sort of drift away maybe into uh you know some, something that's that's not right mm-hmm. so uh the great example that i was thinking about um uh just just now is uh after we did our issue on racism i had a call from a pastor who was a little bit worried you know uh is faith today starting to follow the agenda that's being set by the world Mm. compared to the agenda you know what we should be thinking about the truth of the bible and so i had this great conversation with him and it was just an example for me of why we need that conversation to keep on going because if he felt suspicious of what we were doing maybe and and questioned it and just sort of turned his back we wouldn't have the benefit of being a brother with him and being able to talk about that together so so it's really crucial that we have that kind of ongoing dialogue and and really that's what we try to model in faith today we have those letters to the editor we have ways that people can respond to us on social media and so we're trying to be that that safe orthodox place where people can can have those discussions and be civil and constructive about our differences. Well, I thank you for what you're doing because I think it's very important and really you're helping model, as you say, the way we can have conversations around these things. And thank you so much for just the the years of of rich history in this Ministry of Faith Today. If you want to know more about Faith Today, by the way, it's free. Uh, Go to 700club.ca All the information will be there, and I encourage you to subscribe. Get a subscription to Faith Today. Thank you so much, Bill, for your time and for just helping us understand better what Faith Today does. Thanks so much for having me, Lori. And just tell your viewers as well that we've got podcasts and social media, and so it's not just a print magazine. All that other stuff is there for them, too. Perfect. That sounds great. Well, now Scott takes on COVID-19 and finds a new purpose through the ordeal. Scott was saying, I I think I need to go into an emergency because I, I really can't breathe. It had been a few days since Angie Biltonen and her husband Scott developed COVID-like symptoms in March 2020. They weren't concerned because the number of COVID deaths in the U.S. was still low. Even after Scott was admitted to the hospital with breathing problems, Angie figured he'd be home soon. I thought they'll do the chest x-ray on him and he'll get the treatment he needs if he has pneumonia. Just two days later, Scott tested positive for COVID-19. He sent Angie an alarming text. Said, they're saying that I'm not getting any better and they're going to have to move me to ICU and put me, most likely put me on a ventilator. By now, Angie had also tested positive for the coronavirus. Although exhausted from battling her own symptoms, Angie was more concerned about her husband, 
and she reached out to friends and family to pray for Scott. To have friends come along and, and breathe the word of God into you and just come prepared to these prayer meetings with scripture and words and was just incredible. Over the next week, Scott continued to decline and was put in a medically induced coma and on a ventilator. Angie called the hospital three times a day for updates. And then I was placing an update on Facebook and giving a lot of details so that people would know what direction to pray and how to pray for him. On April 6th, 10 days after going into the hospital, Scott started to crash. The ventilator that had been doing 60% of his breathing was now doing 80%. At that point, I kind of broke down. I really had to consider the possibility that he might not make it. That same day, Angie called the hospital and had a nurse put a phone to Scott's ear. She prayed for him, played worship music for him, and told him she loved him. She also put an update on Facebook and people immediately started praying and fasting for Scott. Overnight, his ventilator numbers dropped to 55%. And then every day after that, there was improvement. By now, Angie's symptoms were gone. Scott kept improving and six days later, he was taken off the ventilator and brought out of his coma. I thought, okay, you know, he's gonna be okay. As the sedation wore off, Scott regained his strength. Angie and their three daughters were able to FaceTime with him to encourage his progress. I remember at one point thinking, okay, that's my husband, he's back. They also told Scott about all the people praying for him. I've had thoughts of like, you know, what has my life added up to? What have I done with it? Have I touched anybody? Have I made a difference in anybody's life? And um, uh, finding out that so many people went to bat for my wife and for me was, was greatly humbling. Then on April 24th, Scott was transferred to rehab where he continued to improve. Two weeks later, Angie was able to be with her husband for the first time in 42 days. When I walked towards him, he, he forced himself up and he stood up. I wanted to show her, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm doing good. It's, it's going to be okay. It was wonderful. I was so thankful to be able to hold my husband again. It was just a, a very emotional moment for both of us. The next day, May 8th, Scott was released to go home. A few days later, he was surprised by a drive-by parade celebrating his recovery. Although he has a few lingering issues that he controls with diet and exercise, Scott says he's doing well and enjoys time with his family again. Scott and Angie know God was with them through it all and has a purpose for their ordeal. It was ultimately to be able to, to, to minister to others, to serve others, to love others, and to be a support. If the story helps someone, that's struggling or has gone through the same thing, then, and, and, and just God using it for his glory, for his benefit, to drawing people back to him, renewing their faith if it's faded. That's what I see God using this for. God does answer prayer, and God is a God of miracles. Well, God is a God of miracles, and Scott and Angie certainly can testify to that. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected so many people in a variety of ways. And for some of you watching, you've perhaps lost loved ones to this disease. We're truly sorry for your loss. Scott shared how going through this ordeal of almost make, not making it made him question how he lived his life. And they both shared that it was truly humbling to see people pray for them, and they're really grateful for the miracle and the lessons it's taught them. You know, one thing that I've really learned in my own life, and especially lately, is no matter what we go through, we all need to reflect on our life and how we're living it. So do you believe your life has purpose? Are you making the most of every opportunity to live for the Lord? I love Ephesians 5, verse 15 to 17, it says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Did you catch that? Don't be foolish, understand what God's will is. Be 
living on purpose. We have a resource, it's called Think Boldly, Move Boldly. And a lot of people have really enjoyed getting this over the years. So if you want just some a boost of encouragement in your life to be on purpose and to take every day as an opportunity to live in the will of God and what purposes he has for you, give us a call at 1-855-759-0700. We'd be happy to send this to you. Well, up next, a miraculous rescue after an avalanche buries a young snowboarder alive. Wow. CBN presents God is for us. Verses of salvation, peace, and victory from the Book of Romans. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, is good, pleasing and perfect will. God is for us, a new audio recording by Pat Robertson, available now. All of a sudden, everything starts to let go. The ledge and everything. By this time, I you know, lost my sight of Matt, and the cloud of snow was so big, I couldn't see my hand in front of my face, thinking he's dead and there's no way I'm ever gonna find him. Michael Walsh and his younger brother, Matt, thought they had found the perfect spot for backcountry snowboarding in Wyoming. The mountain bowl had an overhanging snowdrift and deep powder. They parked Michael's truck and climbed to the steepest point, never thinking about avalanche danger. It's kind of just a cliff, basically, a snow cliff that builds up with all the wind. And as it blows, it just kind of curls and curls and curls and just builds up a big ledge. Well, we were sitting right on the edge of it. The original plan was we were both gonna go down at the same time. I don't know why I changed the plan. He was already strapped in and I had one binding strapped in but this time. And I uh, looked over at him and I was like, hey Matt, what are you waiting for? His brother Matt jumped off the ledge and hit the slope below, triggering a massive avalanche. All I hear pop, 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 the whole bowl, let's go. And it sounds like a freight train running right over me. Matt slid hundreds of feet down the mountain caught in the avalanche. The wall of snow behind him hit hard, burying him under three feet of heavy pack snow. Michael looked on helplessly. As soon as the snow clears, he's no sign of him, nothing. There's just rocks and sagebrush and dirt kicked, ripped up out of the ground on top of the snow. To see him disappear like that, and I couldn't stop it. That was very hard. Michael had a decision to make. Run to his truck to call search and rescue, or try and find his brother on his own. If I went and looked first, there was no way I was getting back up that hill by myself to call search and rescue again. And uh, so I just cried out to God, said, God, what do I do? And I heard him just as loud as you're talking to me, you know, go find your brother. I never, heard God speak to me like that before, and that was, it rocked me. He ran down the hill, frantically calling his brother's name. As soon as I get onto the slide area where it all settled, it's just destruction and no sign. I'm looking for a hat, a tip of his board, a hand, something sticking out of the snow, nothing. And then I start to second guess myself. You know, was that really God telling me to go find my brother? I just, I realized there's no way I was gonna find him. And there's nothing, no sign of him. Uh, and then I finally came to a point, and I just kind of like gave up. I mean, I don't sound terrible to give up, but I mean, there's nothing to see. I couldn't see him, I couldn't see any sign of him. Matt lay buried deep in the heavy snow, unable to move, running out of air and hope. Right when I realized that I was buried, um, and there was, no, there was no way I was moving my body, I, I was certain I was gonna die. I, at that point, I had given up on, on trying to get out. I knew I was gonna die. But as he lay there praying, he says he felt God's presence with him. The peace I felt in that moment was, was amazing. Um, it was, it was I, I would say it, it was him with me in the moment. Um, so I, I was ready. I, I knew where I was going. I wasn't scared. He heard God speak to him and remind him of a prophecy given to Matt's mother when she nearly miscarried him as a baby, that the baby would not die but live, and God would do great things through his life. When he spoke to me, I had hope. It was like, okay, this isn't it. You know, he's gonna rescue me from this. He's gonna save me. Um, it's not gonna stop here, you know. He's, he's still got a plan for my life and a purpose for my life. Matt says hope propelled him to action. 
He had an air pocket near his face and he was able to dig one arm towards the surface. Meanwhile, Michael stood directly above him, unaware of his location. Pretty much about to fall to my knees and just lose all hope in it. So I just yell one more time, Mac. It, like the wind's blowing 60 miles an hour. So when you're wearing a hood and a hat, you can't hear very well. Everything goes dead silent. And I just hear, Mike, I'm fine. There's no way I should have heard him in that with how hard the wind was blowing. Well, I turn and I take a step back. I look under my left foot right before I sit down. I see a hole about the size of a baseball in the snow. And I just start digging frantically. Well, I dug about two feet. And at this point, I'm like, I was crazy, you know? That wasn't really him. And I just kept digging, kept digging. I dug another foot. And I could see the Oakley symbol on his jacket that I had just bought him like a week before that. And I dug to his face. And I could see his face that he was still alive and OK. I started crying like a baby. I was just, I mean, I was so happy, but so scared all at the same time. He spent the next half hour digging Matt out of what could have been a snowy grave. They say it was only by God's grace that they made it out alive. He led me right to the spot where Matt was. I mean, I didn't know where he was. I had no idea which direction he was, which the way it swept him, you know? and to leave me dead center on top of him. And that's not coincidence. Everything was just, fell into place just perfect. God met me there and was standing there and held my hand all the way down that and kept me safe and him safe. I think I survived because God has a bigger plan for my life. You know, he, you know, he has big things in, in store for me um, and I don't think that he was gonna let that be foiled by an avalanche. I think that he, he, he wasn't, it wasn't his will. I'm definitely very thankful you know, that God would that God would rescue me from this, that he would work it out in a way that, that we both come out okay. Definitely the scariest thing I've ever had happen to me in my life. I mean, watching my best friend and thinking he's dead and there's no way I'm ever gonna find him. And then, you know, having the Lord just meet me there on that hill and be there with me the whole time. He was there and he hears your prayers and in your time of need. Have you ever worried about what other people say about you? You know, in today's social media kind of world, there's everybody seems to have an opinion. But in God's word, in Matthew 43 to 48, really it says, if you're persecuted, you are to love and pray for your enemy. Now, there's, it goes beyond that as far as the recommendations today. Everybody has an opinion. Very few people have wisdom. And the other thing is, is not everybody can live your life. You know, as a professional speaker now for 30 years, I actually don't do speaker forms or feedback forms at the end of my sessions anymore, because the reality is a lot of people are complaining about lunch or maybe it was too cold. And really, I'm going to speak based on my own counsel. Now, I'm not saying that you don't get feedback from people you trust, that you have specifically selected to be wise counsel that's different but here's the reality is most people want to share what they think about your life if you keep listening to them pretty soon you're going to be living their life not yours you know as a, we actually operate an assessment company and I had somebody come through train or one of our training sessions many many years ago and they had all these list of things that they suggested that I should do with my company and I said thank you very much I appreciate that but then the company would be theirs. It wouldn't be my passion. It wouldn't be my purpose. It wouldn't be on my integrity. It wouldn't be my calling. So one of the things that we need to do if we're going to be successful in life is just say no. Now, there was another sort of secular speaker who came up with this idea and said, you know what? Your opinion of me is none of my business. And so the reality is, it's not that we're trying to be rude. It's not that we're trying to not listen to other individuals. When I was growing up, I grew up on a dairy farm. And I'm the firstborn, third generation male from Eastern European descent. So was there some pressure for me to stay in the farm? Absolutely, right? And so when I decided to leave the farm and pursue my calling of being a speaker and encouraging others, uh, my family felt betrayed. And so my parents, and you know, there was nothing against them, but they said, I did all of this for you, right? And so there's all 
Everybody around you will have opinions, but you need to screen out the noise, not worry about that. But even God's word said earlier, is people are gonna persecute you. There are, if you stand for certain things, they're not gonna agree with you. Those of us that are believers, we know in these end times, the enemy has very little time left that people are going to attack you. You're a Christian? You silly, how, how can you be that kind of person? So my encouragement is, is that right now that we seek the Lord. I mean, in James 1, 5, is if any of you lacks wisdom, then ask the God who it will give everyone generously. So if you're looking for an answer, go to him. And yes, seek wise counsel, but don't worry what everybody else says because you need to live your own life. I'm Dr. Ken Keyes. Hello, my name is Michelle, and I'm a prayer partner with 700 Club Canada. We have an amazing team waiting to pray with you, and we're available every day. We want to make it easy for you to connect with us. All you have to do is pick up your phone and call us at our toll-free number, 1-855-759-0700. And don't forget to let us know how God answered your prayers. We want to celebrate in your victories too. Our number again is 1-855-759-0700. We look forward to connecting with you today. Well, I've so enjoyed our time together today. It's always inspiring to learn and hear from people's stories and to speak with Bill from Faith Today magazine. What a wonderful example of how conversations in Canada, the unity of the church, we need to have that kind of model for us. And I want to thank you for uniting with us at 700 Club Canada. Those of you who are monthly partners, whether you give $20 a month or more, we have a wonderful gift called God is For Us. And Pat Robertson takes us through the book of Romans. So why don't you call us at 1-855-759-0700 if you haven't yet joined us today. We'd so appreciate it. There's a prayer request from Pamela. She said, I pray the Lord would prepare me with the wisdom I need to have a right relationship with him and to be faithful in the plans he has for me. Well, I think that's a good prayer request for all of us. And why don't you just join me now as I pray that for all of us. Lord, I thank you for this reminder from Pamela. Would you give each of us wisdom that we can follow you faithfully? Help us to just walk out each day living in your will. Help us to live in the joy and strength of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for residing in us, Lord Jesus. And we just wanna be one in spirit across Canada. Rise up the church and may your gospel go forth. May people receive it and be changed in Jesus' name, amen. I love Isaiah 58, 11. It says, the Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land. He will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Believe that today. To contact us, visit 700club.ca.